So he walked in through the door and we used to share this office and he showed me the picture and he said, well, I think I found something that could be very important. His hero was not a baseball player or basketball player or sports. His hero was Leonardo da Vinci. And he talked about it all the time. And he really was running his life, uh, trying to look at the world the same way that Leonardo da Vinci, you know, look at the world. He didn't want to tip off the antique dealers and pretended that he was interested in a piece of furniture and made an appointment, but instead of the piece of furniture, he said, well, how about the painting that you showed me the last time? And the guy said, well, yeah, I still have it. Okay, well, you know, that's what I want. Very, very quickly, you found out that it wasn't a da Vinci, but that it could very well be a Raphael. Was that disappointing to you guys? Not at all. No, anytime you get any one of the Ninja Turtles, you're in a pretty good spot. So we were very happy with that attribution. I, I, I couldn't tell the difference between Da Vinci and Van Gogh. I didn't know anything. I was 22 years old, did not follow art in any way, but I trusted Tony. I thought Tony had a hunch. I said, you know, let's take a shot, let's see what happens. Thirty years of research. Tony did crazy stuff. He went to England at one point. I think it was the Trans Crucifixion Raphael in the National Gallery in London. He tried to get fingerprints to match, but was never able to get enough data. Any any time an expert came up with a name, he would go do just as much of that research on that person as he would on Raphael to see what if that's legitimate or not. So. Like we said, we went to Dr. Nicholas Easta, one of the leading forensic, art forensic experts in the world, whose work is admissible in the court. He said without question, he would bet his life on it. It's not a Cheriolo. Yeah, Marsha Hall is one of the leading Raphael experts who was the editor of the Princeton Raphael Symposium back in 1983, uh, was with my father and said, you have a Raphael. And he says, how do you know? And she goes, because I've been studying Raphael's my whole entire life. I know it's a Raphael. AI is just one piece of the puzzle. The other piece of the puzzle is that we have the pigment analysis. We have the scholars. You know, you need all those things. You, you can't have AI without, if the pigments don't match, then it's no good. It's been a fun journey. And at this point, we've been in it so long, it's just part of the story. And, you know, that's all we care about at this point of getting the word out. Now, I wish he was here to tell the story because he's really the one who uh, should, be know, should be here and had the most understanding and the most information on the painting. So it's really sad that, you know, he's not here. And, uh, um, you know, I wish he, he could uh, receive uh, all the praise that he deserves. Right now, we're just trying to get it out to the world that we have Raphael and we want the world to know.